I gotta ask you this because th this is something that because I pay for the zone, I pay for Showtime, mm -hmm. so I feel that outside of this role, I tend to stay objective. But outside of that, I I feel like because I pay, I do have the right to criticize the zone pay per view thing. To me, it doesn't sit well. What do you make of it? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I hadn't remembered this, but um, I saw it pop up on social media feed earlier today. Um, there was a point where DAZN was um, very openly saying Showtime was getting out of boxing. I, I think it was 2019. And my response at the time was that DAZN will be doing pay-per-views well before Showtime gets out of boxing. And here we are two years later. Um, look. I know not everybody's a fan of of, of, of pay-per-views. Well, no, uh, well, the, yeah. the pay-per-views, the right, right fights, yes. Right. But the, yeah, you it buy is. a subscription service and then you got to... Yeah, I think, look, pay-per-view is not a, a perfect structure. Yeah. Um, and I know there's there's a lot of backlash against the zone for, you know, selling one thing for several years and then all of a sudden flipping and doing 180. Um, but, you know, at the end of this, the pay-per-view platform is there for a reason you know it allows certain fights to happen that wouldn't otherwise happen if there was another better way you know we'd be happy to do that you know but without ad supported television without big network rights fees and without you know um, something else you know pay-per-view remains the, the best business the model to, to get them. this done that's absolutely right because right, so, i think a lot of fans i don't know that side yeah the reason why some fights go to pay-per-view is they just can't pay the purses yeah that, that's absolutely right i mean if you you look at, at the model today and you know even if you're doing two or three hundred thousand buys mm -hmm. you know you're talking about 12 15 nearly you know 20 million dollars you know those are not license fees that any network whether it's premium or ad supported or otherwise is paying so even at that level and then you take that to a level of buys that canelo and others can do then it's, you know, it's a source of funds that just doesn't exist anywhere else. Now, I, I get it. I'm a fan, too, and, and I pay pay-per-views. The, the backlash comes when you rely on it too much and you try to sell people something that's not filet mignon at filet mignon prices. Um, but I, I think properly used, you know, it's a useful tool and it's certainly provided a lot of big fights over boxing history and it has its place. And, you know, uh, look, the zone came in with a very aggressive business model. Turns out they were 100% wrong about how the business works. Everybody told them that when they came in. They didn't listen, you know, and they, they found out the hard way. So now they're in the same boat in the rest of us, except they've got an entire subscriber base, which is, you know, upset about being sold one thing and having a bait and switch. Yeah. It's like they shot themselves in the foot because they came out with that multi-million dollar Right. Campaign. I mean, it's, it's easy to come into an industry that you know nothing about. Mm -hmm and proclaim that everything's wrong and I'm gonna change it all. Well, it's funny how just after a few years in the industry, they've discovered that guess what? Not everybody in the industry is complete morons like we thought and there are reasons that the business works the way it does. And by the way, we can't make it work otherwise. So we're going to go through the same business model that we said everybody else was stupid for pursuing. You know, what goes around comes around. <laughs> Um, Jake, what's what's the next uh, steps for him, Steven? You know, Jake's taking a little bit of a break. You know, he had a really busy year last year um, with three big events. Um, we're discussing with him, you know, whether there's a fight this summer or, you know, a little bit later. Um, he's definitely anxious to get back in the ring. He's got a lot of other businesses, you know, going on, took a little time off. Um, but we're, we're engaged. And look, he's looking for a, a big name opponent, whether it's you know, Tommy Fury yeah, or somebody else. Uh, but look, it, it, it really is up to the fans. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and really, you know, Jake has a great connection with his fan base. Um, he wants to keep them uh, engaged and happy. You know, if it's something that the fans want, it's something that we'll definitely consider. Uh, but at the same time, there's other big names and big opportunities out there. Um, and, you know, we'll see, uh, we'll see how it comes forward. But whether it's uh, Tommy Fury or someone else, um, look, he's, I think he's been a net positive for the boxing business. Um, he's, he's brought in new eyeballs. Um, look, there was a, uh, a Harris poll. I don't know if you saw it. You know, Harris has a lot of consumer sentiments. And uh, they did a poll middle of last year, 2021, and asked people, there, are they a fan of the sport? Uh, and had a list of different sports. Uh, boxing was the number one, the number four sport behind football, uh, basketball, and baseball in the U.S. ahead of 
tennis, hockey, golf, and MMA. So, you know, regardless of what, you know, people like to say about the sport, um, the fans, you know, speak, you know, and we look at consumer surveys after survey, and the, the sport remains popular, and it remains a good opportunity. So, you know, whether it's, you know, Jake helping build the fan base on his demo, or, you know, big fights like, you know, Errol Spence or Canelo, the sport is, is healthy. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's, uh, I would have thought maybe the would have been a different order than just based on what you hear from everybody. But um, obviously, Bellator's in the Showtime family. Would it be are you guys thought about matching Jake with some of the Bellator guys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a it, it would be a, a natural working relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's something that Jake wants to explore, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he's posted some footage and generated a lot of attention. Yeah. You know, and look, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't doubt his ability to you know, go into MMA with the right preparation. Um, he certainly has the athletic ability. He's got the wrestling background, you know, so he's got probably a stronger base to go into MMA than he even did in boxing. So the one thing we do know about Jake, he's not going to do it half-ass. You know, he's not going to go in unprepared. You know, he spent a lot of time preparing for his boxing debut, took it very seriously. And if he does MMA, it's going to be at the right time with a lot of preparation. And, you know, when he's ready to have that conversation, um, Bellator would certainly be interested. Cool. All right, Stephen, thanks so much. You got Appreciate it. it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.